Today's situation is a short daily show all about giving you the facts. Facts on important historical events that occurred on this day and the reason for their importance, scientific discoveries and their impact on humanity, famous birthdays, famous passings, technological discoveries and how they have advanced humanity. Hey, it's all about learning and having fun. So let's get started. Famous holidays and observances for April 8th. Today is the celebration of Teen Literature Day. Reading stories intended for younger audiences allows people of all ages to embrace the vitality of youth. Across the globe, people have enjoyed books such as The Fault in Our Stars, the Harry Potter series, and the Hunger Games series. Literature is important, and NPR put together a list of 100 books rated by 75,220 voters. Check it out in the description below for a book you might like to read for this observance. Hey, if you're enjoying this content, please remember to like and subscribe, and thank you. Now back to the commentary. Today is National Empanada Day. Empanadas have a long history dating back to their first appearance in a cookbook way back in 1520 that was published in Catalan near Galicia, which is a region in northwest Spain. From there it expanded through Italian, French, and Arabian food dishes, eventually making its way to Latin American homes and menus throughout the centuries. You can fill empanadas with just about anything, and it is a dish enjoyed globally. But today, it is nationally recognized. So find your local Hispanic cuisine via food truck or restaurant and order yourself an empanada for National Empanada Day. Step into the spotlight day. People fear public speaking more than they do death itself. However, with social media and the current pandemic going on, it's now easier than ever to get your message across and be heard. Standing up for what you believe in and spreading positive messages or standing up for others is what Step Into The Spotlight Day is all about. You can hear a motivating podcast from Harvard Business on some tips to be able to achieve standing out among the rest when it comes to getting your message across by stepping out of the shadows and into the spotlight. You can listen to the podcast by clicking the link in the description below. Important Historical Events for April 8th In 1766, the patent for the first fire escape was issued. It was a drawing of a wicker basket tied to a pulley with a chain. As the years went by, various design improvements would be created by different inventors. In 1781, a good classical musician and composer, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, premiered his violin sonata number 27. You can click on the link in the description below to give it a lesson. In 1783, Catherine II of Russia annexed the Crimea. Catherine II, or Yekaterina Alexeevna, is known as the longest ruling female leader for Russia. She led the country from 1762 to 1796. This time period is known as the Golden Age for Russia. She fully embraced the ideals of the Enlightenment as she established the Smolny Institute of Noble Maidens. It was a state-financed institution of higher education for the women in Europe. She took feminism to a whole new level as it laid the foundation for women's education in the country. Catherine II is included in the Enlightened Despots during the period of Enlightenment. In 1796, Carl Friedrich Gauss, who was a mathematician, astronomer, and physicist, proved the quadratic reciprocity law. What does that mean? It means that it allows you to check if the quadratic residue from a quadratic equation, or the answer you got, will actually work by using simple arithmetic. It led to greater development and study of our modern understanding of algebra. Thank you, Carl, for taking the time to figure this out. The Battle of Atbara River was fought in 1898. Anglo-Egyptian forces defeated 6,000 Sudanese. This battle was part of the Mahdist War. British forces and Egyptian forces formed a coalition to fight the Sudanese army. The Mahdist War was a bloody conflict between a religious leader named Mohammed Ahmad bin Abdallah against the forces of the Kedavite of Egypt that had been going on for about 20 years prior. The Mahdist state were rebels attempting to overthrow the Ottoman Egyptian administration that had established their own rule over Sudan. In 1885, Mohammed gained the confidence of the people and soon enough in four years gained control of the Sudanese territories. After 15 years, in 1898, the Anglo-Egyptian coalition reconquered Sudan in the Battle of Atbara River. The question enters one mind. 
How can you rule a people that does not wish to be ruled? The ever-growing complexities of human society begin to mount during the end of the 17th century. In 1913, the opening of China's first parliament took place in Peking, which today is known as Beijing. During this parliament national election, only less than 1% voted. However, it was not a national election either, even though it was called one. It was a series of local elections that began in December 1912 and then concluded in January 1913. In 1991, the Oakland Athletic Stadium became the first outdoor arena in the United States to ban smoking. On this day in 2020, the World Trade Organization predicted that the global trade would drop between 13 to 32 percent due to the global pandemic of the time. Fun facts for April 8th. In 1990, Twin Peaks, created by David Lynch and starring Kyle MacLachlan, premiered on ABC TV. In 1876, Amelari Poncelli's opera, La Gioconda, premiered in Milan. In 1974, Hamrin Hank Aaron hit his 715th home run off of LA Dodger Al Downing, breaking Babe Ruth's record in Atlanta. Famous birthdays for April 8th. In 1460, Juan Ponce de Leon, the Spanish explorer and conquistador who searched for the Fountain of Youth and discovered Florida, was born on this day. In 1892, Gladys Marie Smith was born. Her stage name was Mary Pickford. She was an actress and producer. She earned the nickname Queen of the Movies during the silent film era. In 1929, she won the Academy Award for Best Actress in the role of Coquette. She created the stock character role of Ingenue in literature and film, which means a girl or young woman that is endearingly innocent. In 1918, Elizabeth Ann Bloomer Warren Ford was born. She was the first lady known as Betty Ford. She was a candid political figure by bringing attention to the issues of feminism, equal pay, ERA, sex, drugs, abortion, and gun control. She established the Betty Ford Center for the Treatment of Chemical Dependency. Famous passings for April 8th. In 2017, on this day, Caracalla. Yeah, remember that guy? The not-so-pleasant dude? Well, he was assassinated. I can only guess as to why. I mean, he was rather unpleasant and ordered mass genocide and executions under his rule for the Roman Empire. In 1861, Elisha Otis passed. He was an inventor and elevator industrialist. He founded the company Otis, which is famous for the elevators we mostly use today. He also invented a safety device that prevents the elevator from falling if one of the cables fails. Thank you, Elisha, for the safe travels on the elevators. In 1973, Pablo Picasso passed. He is considered to have been a tormented individual and expressed his pain and anguish through the art he created. He has many critiques as well as admirers. He took aspects of his personal life and painted them onto a canvas for the world to see. The women in his life played a role in the emotional and erotic aspects of the creativity he painted with. He has been characterized as a womanizer and a misogynist. A common theme for artists is pain and suffering, either self-inflicted or as a means of escape to express their inner suffering. In 1993, Marianne Anderson passed. She was an American contra-alto singer. A contra-alto is a classical type of singing for the vocal range and the lowest female voice type. She performed between 1925 and 1965 with orchestras and major concerts and recitals. She is an important figure as an African-American artist to overcome racial prejudice in the United States. In 1939, she was not allowed to perform at the Constitutional Hall due to her skin color. This caused the spotlight to be placed on Marion. First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt and President Roosevelt aided in forming an open-air concert at the Lincoln Memorial. She sang to a crowd of more than 75,000 and a radio audience in the millions. She later on became the first African-American to perform at the Metropolitan Opera in 1955, became a delegate for the UN Human Rights Committee, participated in the Civil Rights Movement, was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the Congressional Gold Medal, received the Kennedy Center Honors, the National Medal of Arts, and a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. Thank you, Marianne, for not giving up. Your voice carried the weight of many dreamers. 
If you'd like to learn more and listen to her performance, please click the link in the description below. This has been today's situation. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.